Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute. You're watching Devil's Advocate. If you're not pissed off by the end of this show, then you're not paying attention. So here's your challenge. Stick through because, yeah, we got a couple boring white guys who are going to talk about numbers. But I'm telling you, at the end of this, you should be incensed. One of those guys, Rich Stokel, thank you for being here. Rich, uh, how about it? You're with Legacy Capital Group. You're uh, one of the principals there. And That's right. You're basically an investor. Yes. You're just another rich white guy. Who follows economics and gets pissed off when our legislators don't follow the state constitution. Go figure that. Tom Ryan, you're a high-tech strategy consultant. I'm not too sure really what that means, except that you got the high score on Ms. Pac-Man when you were in college. <laughs> Um, exactly. And, and, and your interest in, in, in government? Has been there for a long time. I spent, uh, before my current role, I spent 15, 16 years doing international financial consulting. And through that, got a, a deep grounding in, in a lot of the work that's going on here in the state. And when I started to look under the covers, like many Coloradans, I just started to get more and more angry. All right. Let's set, let's set the stage for this. Mm -hmm. Uh, we all drive around in Colorado. We all drive on the same roads and bridges, and uh, I've lived almost all my life in Colorado. The roads in Colorado, how to put it, they suck. They've always sucked. Part of it is because we live in a, in a, a climate where it gets really hot in the summer, but gets really cold in the winter, and, he, and that, that's tough. We've got the mountains. And so one of the favorite things of Coloradans is to, of course, bitch about the condition of the roads. So bad was this that a couple years ago, people in the legislature said, we, we need to do something. Talk to me a little bit about bridges first, and then we'll get into the financing, and that's where the fun stuff happens. In the 2008-2009 timeframe, CDOT, uh, there, was, there was a lot of interest nationwide in the state of our infrastructure. CDOT commissioned a study where they went out and studied the condition of Colorado's bridges. At the conclusion of that, they came up with, I'm trying to remember, Rich, if it was 100 and 128, bridges. 128 bridges that were in various stages of needing repair. Now, many of those bridges that actually had been the responsibility of CDOT for, since CDOT existed, was to keep the bridges maintained. The issue today isn't so how the bridges... Words, CDOT really wasn't doing their job very well if these, if these bridges were in that need of repair. That's right. That's and then right. This, a lot of this came out of the fear of, I'm trying to remember, was, was it Minneapolis where the bridge came down? Mm -hmm. And so that was an eye-opener, so everyone ran around and said, we better check on our bridges, and we've got some issues. We do. The problem that the state had was, again, if you think of the 2008-2009 time frame, we were heading into the recession, and the state was looking at cutback funds, and they said, oh my gosh, how are we going to finance the repair of these bridges? And that's when the state legislators started to get politely, we could say, very creative in, in how they went about trying to figure out how to finance these bridges. Right. And that's a story we, we want to get into because yes. uh, this, if, if, if this is legal, pr pretty soon murder could be legal. This is, this is good stuff. Explain yeah. to me some of the limitations we have in, in, in government when we have what we consider to be a need and we don't want to cut mm -hmm. other programs and we don't want to find efficiencies, so we want new revenues. Mm -hmm. Basically, we have, we have a few things here in Colorado that we need to do under the Taxpayer Bill of Rights and under uh, Gallagher and also um, some mm -hmm. of the other restrictions. What, what is it we're supposed to do? The legislature has sure. this problem. They want to fix it, Rich. So the honest and good thing to do would be to go to the people and say, "We need to spend more money. Give us more taxes." Because ask first, which is this whole thing of we have we have these bridges. Do you want them to fall down on your kids? No. Mm -hmm. Can we have more money? Right. But I agree. Times are tight, and, and times were tight a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. They knew that we, we would say no. So what what can you do? All right, so under Tabor, as you mentioned, John, Tabor doesn't restrict government from issuing debt. It just says you have to ask the people first. Make your case to the people. And if the people say yes, great, we have no problem with that. And right, so, but it, it does two things. One, it says if you're going to raise money but with taxes, mm -hmm. you have to ask. If you're going to Issue go into debt, debt that mm -hmm. is, if you want to put it on a credit card, yep. even if you don't have more money coming in, you have to ask. And it also limits the growth of government to a certain formula. And if you want to keep the excess, you have to ask. Exactly. I mean, Tabor is really all about asking first. Exactly. That's all right. So we're not going to ask first. Tell me what happens. All right. So the legislator said, hmm, you know, if we ask the people for more money, they might say no. So what do we do? Let's not ask. Let's figure out a creative and 
um, I would use the word lying, but let's say a creative way You're to get around this capitalist. little Tabor law. You know how to you know how to roll the dice. This is good stuff. All right, keep going. All right. So what they decided to do was well, let's look at Tabor. Tabor says we can't have a tax increase. It doesn't say anything about fees. So what if instead of calling it a tax, we call it a fee? That's allowed. So what did they do? They said every car owner in the state of Colorado on average is gonna pay $41 each every year. All right, now this was, this was known as the faster tax increase or the faster fee, and because having an acronym is really important. Does faster spell anything that's important or does it, I can't even remember. Something, yeah, something, actually, surface transportation. Surface right. Fund, funding advancements for surface transportation, and you have the, have the last part, and economic recovery. And economic recovery. All right, so without, without asking us, we now have a fee the, on, on, on all of our cars. A couple right. of funny things, first of all, that you don't even touch at the paper you just did for independence, which is part of, part of the money that, w that comes out of this actually doesn't go for what cars drive on. It actually siphons out some to give to, to transit because somehow if we give money from our car fees to to choo-choo trains, with, uh, that's gonna make our bridges better. I haven't quite figured that one out yet, but that was among the great cons in this. But this was a fee. Now, mm -hmm. Tabor says you don't have to ask if you're increasing a fee. If you run the, the municipal library and you wanna raise the late book fee from a dime to a quarter, you don't have to ask, or a parking ticket fee. I mean, it would be ridiculous to do so. These are, or a building fee, that is an inspection fee. So this is just a fee. Why are you guys so hopped up? Back at the time, actually we have to look back a little bit before Tabor and recognize that uh, in 1986, 1988, there were, there were several attempts to push through something similar to what eventually was passed in 1992 with Tabor. Earlier versions actually said no tax or fee can be increased without a vote of the people. The bill was crucified. People were saying, oh my gosh, so if the University of Colorado wants to raise their towel fee at the gymnasium from $2.50 to $3, we have to have a vote of the people of Colorado to do that. Um, if Saguache County wanted to raise their building inspection fees, we had to have every voter in the state vote as to whether Saguache County w was able to do that or not. And so when they came back in, in 1992, they said, no, if it's a tax increase, it has to go before the voters. If it's a fee increase, it does not. Now this creates that gray area, what's a tax and what's a fee? So the legislature went to their own Office of Legislative Legal Services and they said, can you provide some guidance to us so that going forward we can put things in the right bucket? This is a fee, this is a tax. The, the, the Office of Legislative Legal Services came back and gave a five point menu and said, Look at these, and if it passes these, it's a fee. If it doesn't pass these, it's a tax. What the legislature implemented in, as part of the 2009 FASTER legislation fails, not just simply, grossly fails four of the five tests that the, the Office of Legislative uh, Service, Legal Services laid out. The only uh, measure that it passes was the requirement that it be called a fee. <laughs> so when the legislature drafted it, they were very, very, very careful to cross Talk out tax, don't put Rich, in fee. You, you, you were telling me in, in this bill, they actually not just mentioned a fee, they, they mentioned this is a fee as described by Tabor in it. Is that what they say? This is not right. a tax increase. They, they say right in the legislation, this is not a tax, this is a fee, because we say it is. All right. Let's just assume it's a fee for a second, all right, okay. guys? Let's just say it's a fee, just like, you know, uh, you're higher disposal fee, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. But, but just one thing that we haven't yeah. pointed out, a fee is meant to be levied on a specific group of people. If you use the service, you pay the fee. You use the towel or you go to the library, you pay the fee. I don't use the library, I don't pay the fee. I love libraries, by the way. But the point is, is that this fee is paid by everyone. And that's the rub. So taxes are broad-based, fees are only paid by the people who use the service. Right, so if Here, everyone pays it. You, if you're a restaurant owner, you're gonna pay the inspection fee to inspect your restaurant. Exactly. You'll pass that along to, to your customers, but you're paying, you're paying that fee. All right, but this sounds like a fee that's gonna go to help our roads and our bridges. So therefore, all right, let's, let's, say, let's say it's a fee. Let's just, 
Yeah. But by the way, what are, what are the other four criteria? Real, really quickly. The that first one is if, to be a fee. You have to call it a fee. They got that one. Right. The first one was, um, will the voting, if this were brought before a vote and it failed, would it reasonably restrain government? Well, I don't know about you, but if, if we held back $100 million in annual taxes and prevented them from borrowing a billion dollars, it would probably constrain a bit around what, what CDOT was intended to do. How much revenue is generated by the charge? You know, if you look at the towel fees that, that are generated up there at CU, I doubt that it's $100 million a year. Just the magnitude of the, of the uh, fee uh, or, or of the revenue raise says that it's a tax. And the last one, and probably the most important one, is how broadly based is the charge? If, if I drive on E-470, I pay the toll because I'm driving on that road, as we've said over and, and over again. And that money goes again. to E-470. That's it right. Doesn't, it doesn't go down to Highway 6 down in Golden. And in fact, a lot of this was based on a 1988 court case, Bloom versus the city of Fort Collins, where the state Supreme Court weighed in and said, let's start to put some delineation on what's a tax and a fee. One of the very clear criteria is that a fee is a direct charge paid by the beneficiaries. Now, if I, I own some land in Custer County. The residents of Custer County are paying this fee, even though not a single bridge in Custer County is targeted for any implementation or any, any upgrades. If you live in Grand Junction, you are paying the same fee that a resident in Denver does. The resident in Denver benefits from 51 bridges in the metro area that are targeted for improvement. If I live in Grand Junction, I can go from the Wyoming border to the New Mexico border, from the Utah border, halfway across the state, and I find two bridges that are targeted so in for other implementation. Words, so the, the argument that, well, even if I live in Boulder, which I do, I'm, I'll likely drive through Denver at some point and therefore have some benefit of those bridges. You're talking to me that in Grand Junction, you can live your entire life, uh, have interstate travel, and never touch one of these bridges that, that this money is going to go to, but still you're paying the tax. Exactly. All right. So the point so, is, whether you cross the bridge once, a thousand times, or no times, you pay the fee. And by the way, if you're out of state and you come in here, exactly. you pay nothing, even though you're using our bridges. Although, what, what happens if, we, if you buy some gasoline here? Wait a second, that's not part of the gas tax, fixing these cars, because if you're renting a car, you're going to fill it up. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's just plug our ears and go, la, 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 la. it's a fee, 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 because, by the way, you should be hacked off enough about that, but it gets better. So, they use this money. I, I heard the word borrow. What, what, what am I missing here? Okay, so here's the deal. So, this fee raises $93 million a year, and that's all well and good, but it's going to take a while to fix these 128 bridges, even with $93 million a year. Board of directors of the Bridge Enterprise didn't want to wait all those years. So the they Bridge Enterprise. Okay, so let's back <laughs> up, and I apologize. So, as part of the faster legislation, not only is there a fee, but they set up a government-owned business called the Bridge Enterprise to we'll fix our bridges. We'll get back, we'll get back to, the, to the naughtiness behind that. Let's get back to the borrowing right now, though. Okay, so the borrowing is at the Bridge Enterprise, which is in the business of fixing our bridges. They are run by the same people who run CDOT. Okay, the, the Colorado Transportation Commission oversees CDOT. They oversee the Bridge Enterprise. The CEO or the right. executive director of CDOT is the director here, right. the CFO. They're all the same people doing the same thing. We'll explore thing. that in a minute. Get to but the borrowing. That's what gets the me. The Bridge Enterprise on December 1st of 2010 went out and borrowed $300 million that we Colorado taxpayers are responsible for and they did not ask. They? <laughs> Let me see if I understand this properly. This is a fee. We did not vote on the fee, mm -hmm. but yet we're all paying 41 bucks more per vehicle. So if you happen to have a, a lot of cars or a bunch of old tractors in your backyard or trailers, you're paying 41 times however many that is. Mm -hmm. And for bridges we may or may not drive on, but now that money is being used to, uh, for bonding to go into mm -hmm. debt, that is the securing the bond, and we were never asked. So overnight, let me see if I get this, the people of Colorado now owe $300 million each, or not each, but for <laughs> the state. Mm -hmm. How is that about, um, you know, 10 bucks each, something like that. 60 bucks each. 60 bucks each, there we go, 60 bucks each, and we weren't asked mm -hmm. if we wanted to go into debt. Correct. And that's well, only round one. But sticking with round one, how is that not a clear violation of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights, which you just said, if we're going to go into debt, you must ask us? 
Obviously, in our opinion, this is a clear violation, and I hope there's some attorney out there that's jumping out of his seat that wants to bring a lawsuit against this, because this will not pass muster by any reasonable sense. So, so we're now in debt against the constitutional law. We were not asked. We, we now owe th $300 million. With more to come, because more to come. the first $300 million will only fix 40 or 50 of the bridges right away, and so there are plans to issue hundreds of millions of more debt later this year. Without asking us. Without asking us. All right. Before we get on to round two, let's let's get back to this bridge enterprise that that you you, you mentioned. Now, Colorado already has a great bridge enterprise. It's called the Colorado Department of Transportation. These are the guys who you see shoveling stuff into potholes and building new roads and maintaining stuff. And yeah, we'll contract mm -hmm. out with a builder to build a highway, but then the state takes it over and keeps it clean and keeps it running and keeps it repaired like these bridges. Uh, I'm curious, why do we need a bridge enterprise pseudo-government if we already have CDOT? Let's we'll try it over here first time. There, there's one and only one reason why the legislature created an entity they call the bridge enterprise, and that was because under Tabor, separate government-owned businesses, enterprises, are not subject to the borrowing limitations of the state. So if, if we create a, a false entity that is, as, as Rich said earlier, it's managed, it's run, and it does exactly the same work as CDOT has done since the beginning of CDOT. But we spool it off, and on paper, we call this thing a government-owned business. Magically, it can now borrow all the money it wants and never have to go before the voters. Let me see if I get this, because this is, this is magical stuff. I'm really excited this is good, because uh, I'm, I'm seeing some good Sopranos-like business here. <laughs> so the government says, without asking us, we're going to start a new enterprise. We're not going to call it a government. We're going to call it an enterprise. And because private enterprises can go into debt, what we're going to do is we're going to take this fee money that we didn't ask for in the first place, we just put on you, we're going to shovel it over to this other uh, private enter enterprise, this private company, and now that they know that the money's going to be coming every year, they can use that as the collateral for them to go into debt and not us. Do, do I have the picture yeah. pretty well? They're not a private enterprise. They're owned by the government, but you have it exactly right. If, it, if it's owned by the government, if this is a company owned by the government, using my terms, mm -hmm. how is that not a government? Clearly it is. I mean, this is a legal fiction. This is Bill Clinton saying it depends on what your definition of is is. So There's the government created this this enterprise mm -hmm. the government controls this enterprise right yep yes they, and but it's not part of the government correct wow for Tabor purposes it's considered totally separate and distinct and therefore they can do the things that they've done so in other words if this stands we don't need to worry about Tabor because they'll just create pseudo governments sure. all the way around and, and private corporations to do this who controls this private corporation that government owns? Because obviously, since we own it, uh, we must be able to vote on who who is on that board. No, no, no. Yeah, no, no, oh, no, 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 no. Hang on a second. Because I I took an eighth grade civics class at St. Mary's when I was a little boy, and they said when government is there, it is a representative government. You know that whole no taxation without representation silliness that the nuns would hit me with. And so we have representatives that we elect to this this corporation that the government owns. Wrong. You so. tell you. You call Mrs. Ronaldo wrong? <laughs> she should have hit you more, John. <laughs> she, hit, she hit me enough, trust me. Probably true. Anyway, so what happens is this is a separate business, and like every separate business, there's a board of directors who oversees the, the affairs of the business. Now, normally, because it's government, you would think we get to vote for these board of directors since it's our money that they're using. That would be incorrect. The people who run the Bridge Enterprise, were, all of them were appointed by Governor Ritter and confirmed by this, the state senate. None of them are elected, none of them answer at this point to anyone until their four-year terms are up. Could you argue that, well, the check and balance is that Governor Ritter appointed them and we elected him and it went, they were all confirmed by the Senate mm -hmm. and so we, all, we elected them, so therefore they're kind of elected? Uh, certainly you could argue that, I mean, and that would be fair, but the point is, is that you have these 11 people who are the same people that run CDOT, by the way. Hang on, I, I want to get into that. There's 11 people on this corporate board. Yep. And they are the exact same people that are on the CDOT board? Yes. 
the, I mean, the man Colorado for man? Transportation Commission. Man for man, woman for woman, person for person. Same exact 11 people. So in other words, when the CDOT commissioners uh, have, have a board meeting, they can say, all right, that ends our board meeting. And while we're all here, let's start our board meeting for the Bridge Enterprise, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly the same people. Exactly the same people. The executive director of CDOT is the director of the Bridge Enterprise. The CFO of CDOT is the CFO of the Bridge Enterprise. The board, exactly the same. They meet in CDOT's offices. It's the same everything. It's CDOT. It's CDOT. It's CDOT. just CDOT. It would be and like it, me being able to say, well, I'm creating a, a corporate entity, and, and I'm not making any money. The corporation is, uh, but it, not having any of it flow back to me. So it's, it's, this, is, this is a wonderful game. In fact, of the first 128 bridges that were supposed to be fixed, 20 of them did get fixed by CDOT, not by the Bridge Enterprise. <laughs> by CDOT. Because before the Bridge Enterprise got around to doing it, CDOT already had done it. All right, let me see so. if I got this hit, hit list right, because this is, this is getting almost comical. So, we, we vote in a tax increase by calling it a fee. Uh, it doesn't go to government, it goes to a private corporation that government owns. The people who run that corporation are the same people who run CDOT, uh, so they run the government. And furthermore, um, this, in direct violation to Tabor, this corporation went into debt. So the whole thing was just a scam so that government could go into debt without asking. Exactly. Am I missing anything? You absolutely, 100%. But it gets a little bit more interesting than that. Because... I really don't see how. When you create this separate government-owned enterprise, one of the restrictions uh, laid out in Tabor is that that enterprise, to qualify as a separate business, cannot get more than 10% of its revenues or 10% of its support from the state. Okay, it has so to be so self-supporting. I want to make sure I understand this properly. That you know, there, there are a lot of these kind of pseudo-governmental agencies. There are a lot of private non-profits non that get contracts from the government and other places. And they're not subject to the Tabor restrictions because they get less than 10% of their money from the state of the state of Colorado. That's exactly In right. In fact, the University of Colorado at, some, at one point was getting very close and may may they some are. time is getting really close to saying we're an enterprise. They are an enterprise. Oh, Every they are an university is an enterprise. Okay, they're an enterprise, which means we can raise our we can raise our rates and all that other stuff. We, we're not subject to Tabor because we only get ten percent or less from the state. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. So this enterprise, private corporation in order to be able to go into debt and, and not have the limits of Tabor, it also can only get 10% or less from the state. And there's two factors there. First is the fee that we're paying is $93 million. How is $93 million, which constitutes 100% of the bridge enterprise's income, how does that not qualify as getting more than 10%? of its funding from the state. Because it's a fee, not a tax. Because it's a fee and because the fee is paid directly to the bridge enterprise. It is collected by the state of Colorado. It's collected by CDOT, but the money goes directly to the bridge enterprise because it is a fee. There's a second aspect of this that's a little more esoteric and that this is- gets better. This, this gets no, better. this can't get any better. Oh, I mean, this how is did, just- How did this, how, how did this even, What's Get out of a committee. This is a, a lie wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in whatever that, that phrase is. But the next piece of this is that in order for the bridge enterprise to actually do repair work on a bridge, they have to own the bridge. So the state of Colorado. Right, hang on, hang on. In order for this company that government created that we have no control over, for them to fix a bridge, they have to own a bridge. They don't own any bridges. CDOT, we own the bridges. Exactly. Not a private corporation. That's even, right. Even though we own that corporation. All right, keep going. So the state of Colorado, CDOT, transfers ownership of the bridges into the bridge enterprise for the period of time that they need to in order to do the repairs on the bridge. So the bridge enterprise company buys a bridge from from the state mm -hmm. in what, an open auction? Now, if you and I went out and started a business mm -hmm. and we said, we're gonna be in the business of repairing bridges, we would do just as you suggested. We would go to the state and we'd say, I want to buy this bridge from you. No, the state transferred ownership of the bridges to the bridge enterprise at zero dollars. They gave the bridges to the bridge to enterprise. A, to, to, a, to a private company. 
Yeah. So in other words, government is now giving away our assets to private companies on the promise on the hope that that when they're finished with it, they'll they'll give it back to us. Well, actually, I mean, was there an open bid? Can I bid for a bridge? <laughs> I'd love to have a bridge. Me too. Get That'd in line. Cool. So, well, remember, it's all to get around this 10% limitation. I will gladly pay a dollar oh. more than what the Bridge Enterprise <laughs> company is paying for well, then, every bridge. Then thing. take out a dollar and you can own them all. Okay. So basically, what happened is they have this cap. So the cap basically. Is in numbers said the value of the bridges that the state gives to the bridge enterprise can't be more than six million. They transferred 77 bridges last year, so I would think that 77 bridges are probably worth a fair amount of money, but not in a bookkeeping sense. So what they did is they said, hmm, all these bridges are old, and so we depreciate the bridge over time. And so if they're My really house old, is old, we'll say... <laughs> I was about to say, it, yeah. never mind. Yeah. Well, I was going to talk about myself. I'm old, yeah. but hopefully I'm wor not worth zero. But they said any bridge over 40 years old is technically worth zero, so we're going to transfer it to the bridge enterprise at a zero value, and we're not violating Tabor. But yet it's not being sold in an open market. There's nobody bidding for it. This is a closed bid to give to a private company to play this game to do it. All right, we've got less than a minute here. Who the hell is responsible for this? Who wrote this? This, this incredible scam to, to make uh, rich guys in bond houses richer. Real fast, in less than 30 seconds. Democrats in the 2009 legislature pushed this. It was signed by Governor Ritter. The Republicans generally opposed it. Why haven't Republicans this year taken it out? It, because we issue debt, it's almost impossible. Because if we take out We faster, didn't issue the debt. Some stupid company issued the debt. Let them worry about it. If we default, if right. we don't pay our faster taxes, the bond we default on the bonds, and no Colorado government agency will ever issue debt again. Good stuff, Rich. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. If you're not angry, you're not paying attention. Tell somebody about this, and we'll see you next week.